Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I make videos about tech, unboxing, product reviews, events, and some fun stuff. And for today's video, we will be talking about security, keeping your passwords and data protected and secured. So if you are interested and if you want to learn more, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started with the video. So we are now living in the modern times in the world of technology where we are using our smartphones and computers on a daily basis. Our gadgets are a big part of our lives. Right now, we are doing our tasks on our phones and computers. We work with our phones and computers. We even socialize using these devices and even doing transactions like banking transactions and online purchases using our devices. And because we use our smartphones and computers so much in all of the things that we do, we now have a lot of multiple accounts and different systems for work, for some tasks, for entertainment, for social media, for online transactions, financial transactions, and many more. Technology has been a huge part of our daily lives. It is very helpful with all the things that we do and keep on helping us, making our lives more convenient and our works more efficient. But with all of the pros from technology, there also come some issues, problems, and threats. And now I will be talking about the threats that we have in terms of our security for our user accounts that we use in our smartphones and computers. We oftentimes hear people or from the news or from whatever we're watching about hackers or someone's user account is being hacked. But do we really know what that means and how is that a threat to our security? So before we talk about how to keep yourself, your information and your account secure, let's talk about what the possible threats could be for our personal security when it comes to our user accounts and data. So one of the most common threat when it comes to security is brute force attacks. This is a hacking method that uses trial and error to crack passwords. Okay, so brute force attack, for example, in simple terms is if you lost your phone and someone gets a hold of it, and of course they don't know your phone password, they are going to attempt to open your phone by trying all of the password combinations that they can until they can unlock your phone. So in these times there are really people very knowledgeable about computers that have done some computer programs that can crack a password in just a matter of minutes now. It's really possible to happen especially if you don't have a very secure password on your phone and it's easy to crack. Next is phishing. So these are malicious intent containing links or attachment from emails. There is another form of phishing that is made through phone calls and it's called voice phishing. And this is where a bad actor calls to steal confidential information about you through a phone call. Hello, this is Sandy calling from People's Bank. May I speak with Angelina, please? Yes, yeah, speaking. Okay, ma'am, I am calling to let you know that there is an unusual activity with your bank account and we detected some fraudulent transactions. Oh no, that's really bad. What do I have to do now? Can you just verify some information first and I'll let you know the next steps? Yes, most definitely. Okay, let's start by providing me with your full name and date of birth. Okay, so my full name is Angelina Jones. And date of birth is January 1st, 1990. Okay, now can you verify your mailing address, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, my mailing address is 1000 Alpine Drive, Beverly Hills, 90210. Okay, ma'am, that would be it for now. And I'll call you back for the next steps. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your help. Bye-bye. So now I'm going to talk about some tips on how to keep your password secure. So number one tip would be to use strong and complex passwords. Strong password length should be more than 8 characters long and there should be at least an uppercase to the password, a combination of letters and numbers, and also include special characters to your passwords. 
having a longer and more complex password that is not easy to guess is gonna make it so much more harder for a hacker or some bad person out there trying to steal your information much harder to access your account next tip is don't use your personal information as your passwords just like your birthday your pet's name your mother's name your boyfriend's name your nickname or any other personal information because these information are easier to find if someone wants to get into your account and have this information available they could try to use it to guess your passwords as well also another useful tip is to use codes and replace some of the letters with the numbers so an example of this would be hello world but i am replacing the vowels all of the vowels to numbers instead so i will still remember the password but it's gonna be more cryptic and harder to guess next tip i know that this is gonna be a hard one because we have a lot of user accounts out there but please don't use just one password for everything because if a hacker cracks your password and was able to log into one account there's also a chance that he could try it to all of your accounts and all of that accounts can be can be accessed as well and is very dangerous okay so nowadays that we have this technology the security also improved as well and we don't just use passwords to protect and secure our accounts but we also have what we call the mfa and 2fa now which stands for multi-factor authentication and two-factor authentication MFA and 2FA strengthens access by requiring two methods. So it's not just relying on something that you know, but also something that you have. 2FA takes two methods and one is your password and one is biometrics or a code. So what's nice about this 2FA or MFA is that it adds another layer of security for your data and your user accounts. It's not just asking for a password because for example, the password was cracked or guessed. There is also another method to provide for the login and that could be a biometrics or a code. Biometrics is the measurement and analysis of people's unique physical and behavioral characteristics. Example of a biometric method is something that we are probably most familiar with and that's the fingerprint. And that's one way to provide a biometric method for 2FA. And aside from biometric, you can also have another code as another method for 2FA. This code will be sent via text or email or app. The code also expires and can only be used once. So if you have it already, you need to make sure that you are setting up 2FA or MFA on almost all of your accounts, especially the ones with confidential and personal information, just like your banking accounts, your work accounts, social media accounts. So it will be harder for hackers to log into your account, access your accounts and your personal information. Okay, so now that you have changed your password into a longer and more complex ones for your user accounts i know that it's gonna be hard to remember all of those and but don't worry there is a way to manage all of your password without even remembering all of them if you really have a lot of user accounts and a lot of different passwords and of course you don't want to have just one password for all of these accounts you can use a password manager and this is a secure spreadsheet it saves all of your password behind master password and it generates long and random password for you as well. Okay, so one of the most popular and free password manager is called LastPass and I'm going to show you how to use it. So this is basically free and you just have to create an account and a master password. Okay, so I have created a master password and remember the rules in creating a strong and complex password. So the password that I just created is accepted as a strong password. You can also put a reminder if you forgot your master password and I advise you to do so. Okay, the next step is installing the browser extension. This helps you put in the password that is saved in the password manager. So it is a browser extension. Okay, so we have added that to the browser extension. Also, when you just started, it is going to save your password to your most used websites. 
this is free for use but you can also pay for the premium upgrade and here we are on the dashboard for the website and you can add items here for example like facebook.com and then you can create also folders for you to organize it and then you can just add your username and password some notes once you save it it's gonna be stored in here and when you try to log into facebook next time you're not gonna have to enter your password for that but just a master password okay for example you have a lot of accounts here and passwords saved and you have different accounts and password for each you don't have to remember all of the password just one master password for the last pass website and that will log you in or sign you in to the different websites so you just have to remember just one password for this and what's nice about this is that it also organizes your different accounts we have this folder for email entertainment social then there is also payment cards here and bank accounts options okay so one more thing and it's actually really scary because to think of it you are just keeping all of your accounts and password in just one master password and what if that master password is compromised so you have to step up your security with what i have mentioned earlier so if you go to account settings make sure to set up 2fa or mfa so if you see multi-factor options here there is a lot of options for you to choose from this one sends like one-time code to your phone the one i mentioned to you earlier so you can have that enabled you can also enable one more option or method and that's through apps just like this that's available for free so this is really cool because again we are adding more layers to the security for your account so make sure to do that as well when you are using this uh website okay so nowadays in these modern times data is also just as important as keeping all of your accounts protected you don't want anybody to be collecting all of your data your personal information for example your banking transaction you don't want people to to know how much you're earning how much you're making how much you're withdrawing depositing all those very confidential information about you you don't want people to get a hold of your files your important documents pictures video because those are all of our personal properties and people can't just take them without our consent you don't want people to be looking through your web searches your online history you don't want people to be eavesdropping in all of your messages in chat in video call because that is an invasion of our privacy okay so this is where encryption comes into place encryption in its simplest form means that someone can't just view the information in a raw form and makes the original information unreadable they would have to decrypt the information use a key or a password to make the information readable again so an encrypted data would look like this it's gonna be a mix of cryptic and scrambled letters or words that really doesn't make any sense but once you decrypt it it becomes readable okay so one way that we can use encryption is when we are browsing or using the internet so you have to make sure that when you are doing this really important and confidential transactions just like uh, bank accounts online purchases that you are in a secure website and make sure that the website url on the browser page is https that means that the website is secure and it's going to be harder for someone to view whatever you are doing online on the browser and on the internet okay so aside from the internet we also have our own data that we have to protect and secure that we always carry around with us in our laptops and don't worry this is not as hard as you think we have a feature from windows and mac now that makes it easier to encrypt your data in your hard drive gives you a key to decrypt it later on
okay so that's it for this video today about security and I really hope that you have learned something from it and you would use some of the tips from this video as well and if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer the questions and I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you so much and see you guys in my next videos